Welcome. This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner here with my co-host Kaylee McEnany and Emily Campagno. Also joining us today, Fox News contributor and president of KA Consulting and former senior counselor to President Trump, Kellyanne Conway is here. And Fox News contributor Raymond Arroyo. It's going to be a good hour. Let's begin with the left-wing media turning on itself and going after the New York Times for highlighting President Biden's public image crisis surrounding his seventh grandchild. Seven. Don't care how he's counting these days. <laughs> Our commander-in-chief is being accused of shunning Hunter Biden's four-year-old granddaughter, or four-year-old daughter, Navy, from the presidential family. And he's reportedly instructed staffers to repeat his lies about only having six grandchildren. The liberal media have long ignored this bad look for President Biden, but the topic went viral after the scathing New York Times op-ed. It led with the headline, It's Seven Grandkids, Mr. President. And the piece didn't sit so well with the co-host of The View. Maureen down to find something else to write about. Yeah, so they write about so. something else. When you start talking about people's families and what yeah. they're doing, it's, I, I find it unnecessary. This is not anybody's business. Nobody needed to know about this. No. This is private. I do feel but like if me. it was Trump, we would talk about it, is the thing. If Trump had a grandkid, he wasn't acknowledged. We all talk he probably about does. He... Oh. What? <laughs> wow. So classy on that show. It's amazing. Oh. Uh, CNN host Dana Bash tried her best to spin the story and blamed Republicans. This is a story that is sad and disturbing on so many levels. Um, yes, it is political. For a couple of reasons. Um, number one, yes, Republicans are using it or, and are going to take advantage of it in a way that is unfortunate and inappropriate. But the reason they are doing that is because, and able to do that, is because of the brand and the kind of person that we all know and believe Joe Biden to be, because it's who he says he is, and it's somebody who is a family man. That's what we see all of the time. <laughs> oh, she's trying to tell the truth there. Did you see the cutaways to the guests? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to talk about that. Meanwhile, CNN's Jake Tapper went even further and took a swipe at the little girl's mother. Uh, for the sake of fairness, that Navy's mom, uh, hun uh, who, you know, had the in uh, incident with Hunter that resulted in this, in this beautiful child, uh, she has uh, been caught up in some far right mm. folks. What? I think the word he was looking for for incident that ended up as a child is sex. Yeah. That, that's what they had. <laughs> it, really it sounds like he thought it was a petri dish. I, I find it really <laughs> rich that those two CNN anchors of all people, and I hadn't seen those clips because why would I have? Thanks for sharing them with a large audience. Mm. Um, they were two of the people obsessed with my marriage, obsessed with my kids, mm. uh, and who we claim, by the way. George and I have four kids. They look just like him. They look just like him. I was there. Um, they look just like him. But that's really rich. And by the way, it's not Republicans, quote, taking advantage of a little girl who's being taken advantage of by her biological father. It is none other than Maureen Dowd of the New York Times saying you have seven grandchildren. But they're also worried about the optics instead of the morality. They're also worried about how bad it looks for the erstwhile family man. So Dana Bash and others want us to think that Joe Biden's a family man. Okay. Um, let's talk about Hunter Biden. He had an affair, not an incident, by the way. He had an affair mm -hmm. with this woman, London Roberts, right after, apparently, he broke up with his deceased brother's widow. Follow along, everyone. Mm. That would be his ex-sister-in-law and then affair. The prior incident. Thank you. Prior <laughs> incident. Prior the man of incidents. <laughs> or just... I think it'd be a great opportunity for Hunter himself to step up and man up and show us that he is a reformed person from all of his travails. Mm -hmm. And he's not capable of doing that. Instead, he flew to Arkansas on a friend's private plane to cry poor to a judge that he couldn't afford $20,000 or so a month and, in fact, got that reduced. But this little innocent girl will have a say one day, maybe in 10 or yeah. 15 years, and I can hardly wait for it. She'll tell us. Last point, Joe Biden somehow thinks he has to put his name on his failed economic policies, <laughs> Bidenomics, but won't put a name on his granddaughter. Uh. I, think, I think she is much better than his failed economy to be bearing the Biden name. Look at you land that plane yeah. like Girl. a fighter pilot. <laughs> 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 well... I agree with Kellyanne. I mean, this series of incidents from Hunter Biden is disturbing, but it points back to a family 
that is in crisis, despite the brand that we keep hearing promoted. This is a family in crisis, and Maureen Dowd nailed it. This is a human problem, not a political one. Joe Biden's mm. failure to recognize his granddaughter while saying, I am here to protect the dignity of the country. I am going to restore the soul of the country. I am going to underscore your human dignity while he erases the personhood of his own flesh and blood. Mm. That's a hell of a trick. But this is not a Burisma story or an Axios story about cursing in the West Wing. This is a story that's not going to go away. It's a human being. And Kellyanne's right. She will have her say, and she should. It reveals something about Joe Biden's character beyond the fluff and the, the spin. I, I, I'm embarrassed for a little Navy. Yeah. That, yes. that she, that her relative, her father, is someone of this caliber who wouldn't yeah. even recognize the fact that she shares more than his name. She shares his bloodline. She does. And uh, she deserves to share his name should she so choose. But I, I can't get that image out of my head of this little girl, and you just see her from the back in Washington, D.C., looking at the monuments, and we learned from reporting she knows who her grandfather is. Yeah. She is proud that her grandfather is the president of the United States, but he won't acknowledge her existence. The second part of Jake Tapper's statement, that just really hit me. We talked about the incident with Hunter he mentioned. It resulted in this beautiful child, Jake Tapper says, who has been caught up with some far-right folks. This is a four-year-old. Jake Tapper, have you lost your mind. A four-year-old is caught up with some far-right folks. I don't know the views of her family. This is a four-year-old girl. Are you that lost in the echo chambers of the swamp that you're going to put politics, put some tag on a four-year-old girl and defend her grandfather, ignoring her existence? That's pretty sick. That's a level so low for anyone in the mainstream media, liberal media, I should say, to go to. You should be appalled, Jake Tapper, almost as appalled as the president of the United States for ignoring that sweet little girl. And this will stick. I do think this will stick. Maureen Dowd talks about her sister, who is a Republican, who voted for Biden two years, two times in a row, mm -hmm. once wrote his name in the ballot, and she was so appalled by this that she wrote a letter to him. So I think those suburban women, whew, they might go fleeing from you, Joe, after this one. So yeah. it's like a mushroom cloud now of bad PR mm -hmm. and, and of reality for the president, Emily. I mean, look at what we've learned from behind the scenes, how the president of the United States treats the people around him. Some of the aides reporting um, by Axios, some of the aides don't want to be alone in a meeting room with him. I mean, this is on the verge of becoming a human resources issue. Right. Only who fires the president? Who's going to censure him? And the reason I say that to you is this falls under that umbrella of who he is when we don't see him. That's right. Uh, well, first of all, the American people fire him. And secondly, I wouldn't have wanted to be in a room alone with him for, for quite some time, for many years, including what he apologized for on the campaign trail. For this, this go around, even though it was successful, remember when he said, ultimately, my behavior with women, you know, I, I need to sort of, in his folksy way, make things better again, after the Me Too movement sort of came out and belied the fact that he's not so great with women and with smelling people's hair and the like. All around, I'm embarrassed for him in the White House. I have to point out this as well. This entire thing reeks so much the hypocrisy, the stench of the immorality, the stench of the holier-than-thou elite first family that continues to circumvent any kind of accountability among the sycophantic left and the apologist media and somehow the court systems too, save for the judge in Arkansas that called out Hunter and his legal team mm -hmm. for and shamed them for trying to hide his assets and hide any kind of accountability despite flying in on a private jet. How sick that is that he would deny, deny the existence of his little girl. And I point that out because look at Hunter, who in his con continued moral failings and really preposterous and appalling uh, moral decisions that he's engaged in, contrast that with the mother of Navy, who was an all-star basketball athlete. She played at Arkansas State University, graduated with honors from high school. She studied um, forensic investigation at George Washington mm. University. She was an absolute all-star. And yet the president continues to say, oh, I'm so proud of my son. Really, why? Why? If I were you, I, I would know. be proud of the mother of your granddaughter. And those political strategists that say the American people <laughs> see the president standing by Hunter for the unconditional love and unconditional loyalty that he shows rings so shallow and so hollow in the face of what us Americans see every day, which is the absolute utter abandonment of that little girl. And I'll just finish by saying, we all remember the movie Parenthood, remember in the 80s? Mm. And when Keanu Reeves said, I'll paraphrase it for uh, TV, but he said, essentially, you need a license to catch a fish, you need a license to own a dog, but any jerk can be a father. And I guess in this case, a grandfather too.
You did clean it up, by the mm. way. Yeah, <laughs> Thank nice. you for that. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.